Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's show, we're going to tackle the fish tank bonsai combo. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two, shoots in here, so I'm probably going to cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. We just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the we bag. We with trees, and then we water as we need to. We're trying to get rid of those air pockets. So about a year and a half ago or so, I kind of took apart the top of the fish tank cabinetry system here that I had set up uh, in some bonsai fish tank combination with a waterfall and everything. Let me show you some quick video and a couple photos from what it looked like about a year and a half ago. I have some African cichlids in there for some fish and uh, I wanted to have a fish tank below and I wanted to have almost a natural pond slash waterfall above. A couple varieties of ficus with my river that is a dry bed at the moment. And so this top portion right up here is a removable bonsai pot, just homemade, and I have my ficuses spread out there. So this is a look as of February 2018. So that wraps up archival footage in the plant room. So as ambitious as I was, that plan had uh, water that moved a little bit too fast. It wasn't going to the fish tank uh, the way I wanted to, and after I took it apart to do some maintenance, I just never put it back together, so it wasn't as easy of a take apart, put together to take care of the fish inside as well as the bonsai on top. So this past fall and winter, I decided to tackle it for phase two. And so we'll take a peek at that today and, and see where it's coming. And today we're actually going to do some transplanting because I have the structure built, and I'll show you that in a moment. Before I was able to start shooting this video and get ready to put the bonsai on top, though, I had to take care of the fish tank. Here's one of my sunnies, pumpkin seed, back there. So those two filters back there, which are generally out of view on purpose, although you can kind of see that blue one back there right now. Um, I made my cabinetry to go around the fish tank completely so you don't see it, and then we're going to put the bonsai on top. But I had to reach in there and get all the cords ready and fix the fish tank. So in my structure here, the bonsai, one of my homemade wooden bonsai pots, if you will, or tray. It's gonna sit right on top of here. And uh, so I always have to have access to these, so I left this much open and I take them out, clean out those filters, and put them back in. And I got the light on top right now. Everything's set up, freshly changed water, about a third to a half of a tank, and the sunfish are all hiding right now. I've got three of them in there. So let's see what I did to create something on top. So I needed something to go on top that could have access to all my can lights up above. I have three right now. I've had four at times. Some of them, are, of course, are keeping those guys in shape. But now I need to make this look prettier and make more room in my plant room for my bonsai. My bonsai to be. These are the, this is the pre-bonsai spot. Let's see what we've done. So what I've created here is a bit of a shelf of sorts to fit on top of the fish tank as is. This top section right in here is going to be where the new bonsai tray is going to sit and I've coated it with the uh, Flex Seal rubber spray so it keeps all the water and it's, it's, it's created at an angle so you can see right here it's real narrow then it gets wider down here. So the water, when this is level, the water is going to pool all down here and then I've drilled my drainage holes. It's going to go through the drainage holes into the fish tank, which is this section right here. So it'll drain from left to right and it drip drops right here. I've already tested it so I do know it works. On the bottom section you'll notice I did stain the top to try to match that. But on the back sides here on the bottom is all that black flex seal spray. So the black flex seal spray is going to keep any water damage from occurring in this wood a lot sooner than it would. So it'll just uh, sit on that uh, black flex seal, that rubber, and just uh, evaporate and we'll have no issues. So let's put it up on top for you. 
So I'll put this now on the fish tank so you can get a feel for what it looks like from the side view. But be careful of the light on the tank. So there's the view of it. All the gaps, you'll understand what those gaps are for in a moment. I'll lift up my light and slide this over. I'll put the light right in the middle. And now I'm going to straighten it for you. So there you have it. The front of this, I didn't put any nails in here, I just glued that on to the pre-existing section that I created. And so I had to make this uh, about a three quarters of an inch less width here so this could be nice and flush right here. So got the stain that I used from before and so now here's my new top. So this was the top before and now I have this new top here. So let me get the camera here and show you exactly what these sections are for. Once again, here's the big tray section. You can now see this uh, angle much better. Any water that drips in here is going to all run down here into the draining holes right there. And it works pretty slick. I've already tested it out. Here's my light. My light for the fish tank goes in the middle of those three sections. So you see I've got the back section, the middle section, and this section. When I'm all set up and ready to go, the light sits right in the middle, shines through, and creates the light in the fish tank. And you can still see it from this angle, but that'll eventually be covered a little bit with some plants, and we'll show you that next. So I created the system so I could put a lot of the plants that I have in my plant room that it fits customly to what I typically do. So I have a lot of plastic training bonsai pots that are of this size. My Porch Lacara Afra here and this one right here for an example, a, a trio. And when I, I take them from my littler pots, put them into these pots, they're going to stay in here for a year or two or more. So back in my plant room in the winter time, I got a place to put them. So I've created the grooves in the back, my little shelf system as you noticed when you saw that. I made it so these trays fit right in there. So there's the first, first parts of Lakara Afra. I also have my dwarf jade. So that slides right in there very nicely. And then I have another Porch Lakara Afra from what used to be my forest. So those are evenly spaced. I got three plants back there. And they're receiving all the light from the park hands up top uh, with my LED lights in there. Now, I can always raise this section if I want and make yet another step up and we'll get them even higher and closer to the lights. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, place those right there. And because this goes straight through to the fish tank, when I water these, my drip tray is the fish tank. So my soil was rinsed when I put the plants in there and it's kind of got a little bit of an aquaponic setup here. So we've got the fish and the fish waste. And what I'm eventually going to do here in the next couple of weeks is I'm going to take my little water pump that I have and I'm going to be able to pump water and then use the water from the fish tank to just go ahead and water my plants in these two sections and my tray and the water is just going to drip right back into the fish tank and they're just going to kind of feed each other. So the biggest thing I have to be careful of is I'm not going to, I'm not going to put any fertilizer on these guys during the winter months so I'm just going to leave the fertilizer off of this whole section. So the fertilizer just comes from the fish. So the fish waste, the fish food, they don't eat the poop and all that good stuff is going to come and feed the fish or the feed the uh, bonsai naturally and then go back into the fish tank with the filtration system, a lot of moving water down there and we're going to use this as an experiment. So I have three sunnies in there up from my cabin, my dad's cabin up in the Brainerd, Minnesota area and we're going to see how well these uh, sunfish like the water as it's got the cycle cycle here. So let's add a couple more plants. I have one more Porch Lacara Afra. And this sits in the front row as well. I made the front row sit down about an inch lower than the back row. So the Porch Lacara Afra up front sits a little bit lower. These guys sit a little bit higher. I've got a nice depth of field. I want to see all my plants from here to the top back here. So these two are just my leftover trays, 
because I have so many of them. And I just put them in there for right now until I have some plants that fit in there. I don't currently, so I just leave them in there to put other plants in. Like this guy, for instance. I've got my little uh, aloe plant here that I could put in here. And I got this aloe that's not even in a pot right now. I could put this in here as well. However, that's blocking my view from back there. But that's okay. Should I decide to keep the aloe in here for a little bit longer, I'm just going to switch the back to the front and the front to the back. And I've got my aloe in the back. So I've got this array of uh, plants that are all ready to uh, receive the light and we'll see what happens. So this is, this is pretty nice right here and everything's kind of darker color. I've stained everything to match this. The light is kind of camouflaged now in here. So there's the setup up close. You can see all the six plants in there. Got my plants up there receiving light from the par cans. And by the way, my lights up here in my plant room are also LED plant lights. So they're spreading the wealth to all my other trees. So I'm getting it as bright in here as possible. I have an inner lip in here. It's again covered with all the flex seal. This is all flex sealed, so all my drippings. And here's my box. So I made a box with no screws again in the front. I glued that section. What I ended up doing in this little project is I screwed in all the screws from the bottom. And then I also flex sealed this where the drips will drip out. So the holes are flex sealed inside and out, top to bottom. So no matter which way I put my pot in here, I can go ahead and put it in here. And I made this just a little bit smaller than the opening. And I like to think that I'm smart enough to think that I did that for a reason, and I typically do do things for a reason. But this little lip of this light here fits in there. It gives me about uh, a quarter of an inch gap in here so I can keep that light in there. And so there's my next tier of bonsai pot, big tray. So this is gonna be a growing forest. This is just a place to put all my little pre-bonsais so they have a nice place to grow with some light. So I have all my park hands up top and I'm actually gonna do a little experiment here and I'm gonna take these park hands, shove them down to light here and I'm gonna bring one of my square LED grow lights that I have with the red and the blue, get that full spectrum color, put that hunkered down nice and low next to these uh, new bonsai. And we're gonna test that out. So next, we got a plant. We're gonna put some stuff in here, so that's the exciting part. So let's start getting going on planting this massive pre-bonsai forest. The first step is to put some meshing over the holes so we don't lose all the soil through the holes. The sheetrock tape is covering the holes nicely. We can start adding some bonsai soil. As a cost-saving measure, my first layer at the bottom is recycled bonsai soil. So this has been recently taken out of pots and rinsed once, and I'll use that for the bottom layer. Saving some money, reusing some soil that's still in great shape, hasn't decomposed all that much. We'll get some more soil. From a recent Minnesota Bonsai Society soil sale, I was able to stock up and be all loaded with my pumice and my lava rock and my akadama. Because this is for my tropicals in the winter months, I'm not gonna use as much of the Akadama. This will hold the moisture in really well. But I'm gonna use more of the lava rock and pumice and we'll throw a little bit of this. So probably two, two to one. Instead of one, one and one, I'm probably gonna go two or three of these guys for every one scoop of this for this mix. So now I have a layer of uh, fresh soil. It's given me about an inch left from the soil to the top. So I'm going to stop right there and work with the plants next. Uh, this is one of my medium blends, so I have larger size than this. I have this medium blend and I have finer. And I have found that the uh, tropical plants in my plant room really have thrived with the little bit smaller. So I decided to go in medium with this one. We're going to have so many plants in here and this will hold the moisture pretty well. And uh, we're going to give it a whirl. So that's ready to go. Now I have to go look at the plants. So we're at my plant table here that has a little variety of what's been going on. I have a cherry tree right here that did bloom a little bit. I'm getting some new growth. This was a cutting from uh, the fall. I want to do some experimentation and it's budding out real nice on top there with some new growth. But today we're going to do all of our tropical plants that I've recently clipped in the last couple of months, 
put in some small containers and then into bigger containers. So all this clip and grow here, I, or clip and root I should say, started in this size pot. So we got a couple of similar sizes here. These were cuttings from about, uh, well, the last two or three weeks. But about eight weeks ago, all of these were cuttings right here. This guy right here, and these two here and here in the back. So I'll move that right there and there. So about uh, October-ish, November-ish, when I put in my plants into the plant room from outside, I put them into these small ones and let them grow for about six to eight weeks. And I found when I lifted up the pot after about six to eight weeks in the finer soil, I had roots sticking out of the bottom. And I'll show you right here from this pot. Uh, can't see, there you go, there it is. You see that root dangling right there? So I have roots growing out again just a few weeks later. So they are loving life right here under the grow light, which is off right now because it leaves that real purpley hue. So I have two of those lights. So that is only about six inches from the tops of these plants, but these have loved life. I also put a couple into my long, this was in the old structure on top of my fish tank. And I threw a couple of these uh, ficus right here into this tray and these are growing. I'm getting some new shoots here. They're growing just fine in here. But I want to get all of these plants transferred into our new pot right here. I don't know how many plants I will fit into this uh, new tray yet, but I know for sure these six will go in there. And we typically like odd numbers, so what I will likely do is grab some of my small ones, any of these right here. They have new shoots in them, so I know they've rooted and they're growing, but it's really premature to take them out of their pots. But since I have so many, I'm willing to experiment with two or three of them to put into this bigger pot back here. As long as they don't disturb or cut anything and just put them in a new pot, maybe I'll be okay. So this one in front is the biggest and boldest tree. I'll probably put that in the center somewhere. And I got this tree off to the right just because it was leaning that way. And then that tree back there, which I recently trimmed already, I'll put maybe on that side. And I got those back there. It's time to do some placing and plant the trees. I've nearly run out of battery for my camera. So therefore I can't show everything that I'm gonna do here, but one final shot before it possibly goes blank. There's the six trees just taken out of the pots and put it in there. I just want to pull one of them up here and show you all those roots that have been growing uh, since I even put it in the uh, newer pot. Those are, that's all growth from like about there down. Sorry for the blurriness. So there you go. So I'm not going to cut anything. I'm just going to put them in. They'll stand up real nicely. Don't need any wires with these trees. I'm going to find something that's pleasing to my eye put them in place, and we'll maybe have some video enough to show you a final product. So, be back in a flash. Well, there we go. I think we have leaven in there. A little bit of everything. Got a couple little ones in the back. Some of those didn't have a lot of big roots on them. This little one up here, my variegated ficus, had some nice roots on there for being such a short time. But we're just putting them back into some soil, keeping them watered. A lot of moisture in my room because of the fish tank. Hopefully they'll do well. Now I have to figure out the light configuration, but for right now, I think we'll stop right there for the end of part one, or we'll see if we can get a couple more shots here done before the end of this uh, take. You'll have to pardon all my cords at the moment. I gotta do some reconfiguring. Hmm, fire hazard? We'll fix that. It's just temporary to see what everything does. I've got this sitting about five to six inches above the plants right now. Um, I think I'm gonna go just a little bit higher. So I just have to twist my wire up top and we'll get this grow light right on top of that box. It's almost the same size as the box, so it's gonna get all the trees real nicely. So I'll adjust that and we'll take a peek. It does give that purple hue as I was telling you earlier, but it's a great grow light. I've had a lot of luck with it. So I like this height much better. We got a little bit more height from the tree, about six to eight inches. I'll change all that wiring later. Just wanted to see what it would look like. So I got my three pars up there now shooting two of them straight down and one over to those trees. I'm back. I did want to talk about the difference between these lights. So I've got the uh, red and blue and full spectrum LED LED light rather. 
I have two of this Unifun light and I love them. To date, I think this light has produced some of the best results for my indoor plants. I try to keep them about six to eight inches from the plants. They seem to absolutely love them. When I bring in my Christmas cactus bonsai for, from the summer, from outside, the blooms are just amazing. They explode. So I would check out the Unifun at the price of 30 bucks. This has been one of my best lights. The biggest downfall from the red, blue, full spectrum LED lights like this is it does leave that purple hue in your room. So if you watch earlier in this YouTube video, you'll see the room without the lights on. And then when I turn on this Unifun light, you see the purple, pink, red, blue, you know, all those colors kind of come through. It looks more purplish. So that is one downfall. But if it's not in your living room or in a plant room like for me, it works out great. And these are all LED lights too. I got the one up there in the ceiling recessed. Now for these recessed floodlights, I've used both the Philips light at about $7.99 per bulb and also this Fight Electric LED light for about $14.99. They both seem to work uh, pretty well, uh, but the bigger uh, Fight Electric seems to be a much more powerful uh, light and you're paying twice as much. I think it's a, a much better light which uh, covers much more of the full light spectrum. And these guys right here, I'll show you what those look like. For what I've called my can lights or clip-on lights, I typically use the wider model that makes a larger flood of light. You could also use the smaller can for a little bit more direct flood of light. They range in price from $6.99 to about $8.99. For these can lights, I've used the light bulbs I already showed you, plus I've also discovered this LED plant grow light from Fight Electric as well. You can see all the different uh, uh, colored LED bulbs in this one. This one seems very bright and has shown off my plants very well. Remember, there are a ton of lights out there to choose from, and a lot of it might come down to your aesthetic, what you want to see. If you don't want the purple hue, you're going to get lights that are not having that color on there. If you want the nice LED, just white, bright lights, uh, that'll look better in your living room versus a plant room like I have. Work what's best for you, and good luck with your lighting. I cleaned up the wires, so there we go. Much safer, looking much nicer. For Dave's Bones Eye, I'm Dave Weiss. We'll see you next time. here so I'm probably gonna cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom growing upwards into the we bay. We the trees and then we water as we need to. We'll try and get rid of those air pockets.